Καλησπέρα σα. Um, I especially would like to thank uh, the Ambassador of uh, Croatia and the Ambassador of the Netherlands for honoring us with their presence today. Um, and of course, we should uh, acknowledge the support of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for hosting this event in this beautiful venue. Um, we are delighted to have with us uh, today Stephen Hill. Um, you, most, of, most of you probably have already read the articles in VIMA and uh, our little invitation. Um, I would say that uh, uh, it's uh, a tremendous honor for us to have someone who is such an out-of-the-box thinker. Um, Stephen thoroughly analyzes our own side of the Atlantic in uh, a kind of unique way for, for what usually we hear here in, in Greece and in Europe. Um, he uh, emphasizes on how European institutions have managed to provide a model for economic security, environmental sustainability, and finally, global stability. Uh, when we hear that kind of approach for an American political scientist, if I can call you that way, um, it's even more encouraging because it's evident that there is a well-perceived understanding between the two sides of the Atlantic. Um, in IPEDIS, in the Institute for Regional Dialogue and Strategy, this is exactly the goal that we had when we founded our institution, was to bring together different uh, ideas, perspectives, uh, experiences, and to try to uh, construct new approaches. And I think uh, Stephen Hill uh, fully reflects that kind of thinking in our effort. So without further delaying you, and again, with our deepest appreciation for all of you managed to, to be with us today, I would like to call Stephen to offer his ideas. Thank you very much. Uh, well, it's a great pleasure to be here in Athens, and thank you to IPEDIS for setting up this forum and uh, giving me an opportunity to address all of you. Um, I've been on a, uh, a speaking tour connected with my book, which is titled Europe's Promise, Why the European Way is the Best Hope in an Insecure Age. And I've been in, this is my 11th country in 19 city all across Europe, and, um, and really, uh, each, each forum has been a, 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 a very interesting and I would say even important exchange about the, uh, the conditions and the challenges that we all face collectively going forward into this 21st century. I had the great honor uh, yesterday of touring the Agora and um, for me it was, it was a thrill because being in the place where democracy began and seeing um, that, you know, here in Greece you have layer upon layer of civilizations and empires that have come and gone. Uh, looking at some of the statues in, uh, in, in some of the buildings in the Agora, and you know, these are statues that are thousands of years old, and the faces look very modern. They, they look like they could be walking around the streets of Athens today. And you realize that in some ways the challenges that we are looking at today is an old, old story. It's really about how do we um, learn to create a society that helps to uh, families and individuals to have a good life? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of hot happiness, as we call it in the United States. And, and, and so it's uh, reflecting on that and realizing that today's challenges are yesterday's challenges or the challenges of thousands of years ago is, is somewhat hum humbling and also, I think, somewhat um, enlightening because it, it, may, it makes, I think we can feel encouraged that the challenges of today uh, are not insurmountable, that other future generations have overcome the challenges that they faced, and that uh, in many ways what we're going through today is, is actually, in my view, kind of exciting because we're, we're in the process of reformatting the world, reformatting the economic system. The world has gone through uh, an, an economic uh, earthquake of about 8.0 on the Richter scale, 
And we've seen numerous aftershocks since, um, both here in Greece, uh, in California where I live, where we've been going through our own sort of um, Greek crisis. I think they just had a recent report in California where 25% of Californians don't have health care and uh, oh, uh, a higher unemployment rate uh, than you have here in Greece. And so each society, each country is being asked to, um, to rise to the occasion and to solve this, this challenge and these dilemmas that we face. And it's not just, be, it's beyond the statistics and the numbers. It's also that the ideas we lived by, the economic theories that we developed our countries around for the last 25, 30 years, at this point have crashed. Um, so the world really is groping towards a new way of developing our economies that don't leave us mired in debt and allows us to go forward to develop our economies that, uh, to support families and individuals. And what's really new about the challenges we face is suddenly we have countries like China and India and Brazil. Countries with, you know, China has 1.3 billion people. India has a billion and by in 20 years we'll have more people than, than China has. And uh, this really has changed the game in a way. And so really what I began to look at is, um, and what I look at in my book, Europe's Promise, is, 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 is it's really the story of post-World War II Europe and how it transformed itself from a, a place of military warring nations that had fought each other for centuries into a place that in many ways is a model for how we can develop a modern society and how we can uh, take care of families, uh, cr create, uh, foster what I call peace and prosperity partnerships with our neighbors and do all that in a way that's as environmentally sustainable as possible. Uh, because the world is facing two immense challenges. And the first is how do we identify the institutions and practices that are gonna allow this burgeoning global population of six and a half billion people to enjoy a decent standard of living? Or, you know, how are we gonna allow the Chinese and the Indians and the Brazils to have their seat at the table, which of course they deserve? And how do we do all that in a way that doesn't burn up the planet in a Venus atmosphere of our own creation through excess carbon emissions? These are challenges the world have, has, has never faced. And, and Greece is occupying its little corner of the world in this challenge. And in many ways, in my view, is, is kind of a, what we call in the United States the canary in the mine shaft. It's, it's, it, it gives us the indicator of something that is um, is wrong about the overall environment, the first to feel the effects of this overall environment of how we've developed our economies in this, in this 20th, uh, late 20th and early 21st century. Um, so I, I think in many ways you can both take uh, courage and, and heart that a lot of what you are facing, other economies around the world are also facing. The challenges are somewhat different um, on a micro scale but in a macro scale, they're really quite similar. And, and, they, and they have to do with how do we develop economies in this 21st century in a way that um, allows us families and individuals to have a decent life and that preserves the environment. These are the two, two challenges that we face. And the challenges of the wealthier countries, and, and, and by those countries I mean countries like Germany and France, Greece, Japan, the United States, is gonna be how do we learn to do more with less? How do we learn to take the amount of, of wealth that our economies produce and take care of our people with that? How do we learn to get more energy from less fuel? How do we learn to build in efficiencies into our healthcare systems and into our retirement systems and the support networks in a way that doesn't bankrupt our governments? This challenge of doing more with less, of having greater productivity, is what all economies, all nations are facing right now. And, and so again, you can feel uh, that you're not alone in trying to uh, uh, deal with these challenges. Some of the solutions you'll come up with, of course, will be Greece specific. And in meeting with the uh, deputy minister, I came away feeling um, somewhat heartened that, uh, you know, of course, someone in that position, their job is to reassure people. But beneath the reassurance, it seemed to me that there were some real details, some real concrete plans about how to build upon the strengths of Greece going forward um, that would allow you to meet some of these challenges.